Antiplatelet drugs inhibit platelet aggregation and thus prevent the formation of primary platelet plug. To understand the mechanism and site of action of these drugs, let's review primary platelet plug formation. This is a brief overview of the primary platelet plug formation. This is a capillary showing two endothelial cells. Normally, the platelets have alpha and dense granules. The alpha granules will secrete fibrinogen and von Willebrand factor, while the dense granules will secrete serotonin, ADP, which helps in platelet aggregation, and calcium. They also have GP2B3A receptors and GP1B receptors, which are shown in green and blue respectively. Now, as a whole, platelets do not interact with the endothelial cells normally because the nitric oxide and prostacyclines do not let the platelets aggregate. Now, when there is vascular injury and the collagen is exposed, what happens is that the circulating von Willebrand factor or that secreted by the endothelium, it attaches to the GP1B receptor of the platelet and causes the platelet to undergo some changes. The platelet changes shape as you can see and it also degranulates releasing the substances from the granules and the receptor GP2B3A also changes shape and through fibrinogen it binds to another GP2B3A receptor on another platelet thus forming the platelet plug. It also secretes ADP from the dense granules which act on P2Y12 receptors and also help in platelet aggregation. Thromboxane A2 is also secreted which helps in platelet aggregation. Now these are the sites of drugs that have marked as 1, 2, 3 and 4 which can be blocked and thus antiplatelet action can be achieved. Now that we know where different antiplatelet drugs can act on the primary platelet plug formation, let's classify them. First is thromboxane A2 synthesis inhibitors. Secondly, phosphodiesterase inhibitors are there. Thirdly, P2Y12 receptor antagonists. And lastly, GP2A 3B receptor antagonists. Now, the thromboxane A2 synthesis inhibition is done by inhibiting the COX-1 enzyme irreversibly and thus the platelet cannot produce thromboxane A2 and thus thromboxane A2 cannot contribute to platelet aggregation. Its action will last for the lifetime of the platelet because it is irreversible inhibition of COX-1 and as platelets have no nucleus, no new enzymes can be synthesized and in their short life of 7 to 10 days, they die without producing thromboxane A2. Phosphodiesterase inhibitors will cause increased cyclic AMP by inhibiting its degradation and thus calcium release from the endoplasmic reticulum is not there and thus alpha and dense granules which are necessary for platelet aggregation will not be released from the platelets. It also has vasodilator action. P2Y12 receptor antagonists will irreversibly inhibit the purinergic P2Y12 receptors on the platelets where ATP, ADP will normally bind and cause platelet aggregation but that cannot happen now. So they basically block the action of ADP on platelets. GP2B3A receptor antagonists will block GP2B3A receptor for fibrinogen as well as for von Willebrand factor. They will thus inhibit the final step of platelet aggregation. Now the thromboxane A2 synthesis inhibitor is of course low dose aspirin that is between 50 to <clears throat> 325 milligrams per day. If high dose is used then PG12 will also be inhibited and it is basically an inhibitor of platelet aggregation and we do not want to inhibit PG12. And such low doses hardly produce the side effects associated with aspirin. The drug used as a phosphodiesterase inhibitor is dipyridamol. P2Y12 receptor antagonists include presugril, ticlopidine, 
and clopidogrel. Newer forms of these drugs are gangreler and ticagreler. In all of these drugs, Presogril is fast and better than all the others, but it carries the risk of bleeding, which is highest than the other two. Two important side effects to remember about Ticlopidine are neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. Do not forget these two side effects. Clopidogrel will cause only diarrhea. Now these new uh, P2Y2 receptor antagonists are reversible as compared to the older ones. Now GP2A3B receptor antagonists are Epsiximab, Eptifibatide and Tyrofiban. The MAB MAB shows that they are um, monoclonal antibodies against GP2A3B receptor. Fib means they are fibrinogen antagonists. Now the uses of antiplatelet drugs are in acute MI and unstable angina, both non-ST elevation MI and ST elevation MI. They are given mostly in dual um, therapy as dual therapy of aspirin and clopidogrel. It can also be used in coronary artery disease. They decrease my MI occurrence, decreased stroke and decreased mortality post MI. They can be used in prosthetic heart valves to prevent valve thrombosis and thromboembolism. They can be used in transient ischemic attack and also in peripheral artery, artery disease.